morning, everybody. I'm going to start again because I haven't got my microphone on before. And welcome to the executive meeting of the um, 3rd of March. Our first task is to approve the minutes of the last meeting. And I'm going to invite Councillor Baldry to say something on the um, item regarding the executive forward plan on the minutes. So, uh, th thank you, Leader. Good morning, everyone. Um, the ex minute in question refers to the garden waste service and we said we would come back to this meeting with a report. I am pleased to say that we as an executive and the council in particular have put enormous pressures on FCC <coughs> to restore the service. We had a meeting with them late yesterday at which we were convinced by their plan which is to restore the service with effect from the 28th of March. So I am convinced and the leader is convinced as the officers that they will be able to deliver a regular fortnightly service uh, for the collection of garden waste. Taking the opportunity, if I may, leader, to apologise to the public that it has been a pretty poor time for them, for the gardeners in particular, and not having their garden waste collection. The service will now be restored on a fortnightly basis uh, from the 28th of March. So those people with a... Uh, uh, black bin service the week of the 28th of March will not have their garden waste collected that week. It will be collected the week after. But I'm very pleased, Leader, that the service is coming back. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baldry. That is indeed good news. Thank you very much. Has anybody else got anything else on um, the minutes of the last meeting they'd like to bring up? If not, can I take them that everybody approves them as a true record? Thank you very That's much. Carried. Thank you. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is urgent business. I'm not aware of any urgent business to be brought to this meeting. That's correct. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Um, division of the agenda. There may be a need to divide the agenda later on, depending on how the discussion goes. So we'll see. Um, declarations of interest. Members, um, do you have any declarations of interest to make? No. Any other members present? Any declarations of interest? Right. Thank you. Um, public question time. I haven't been notified of any public questions this morning. Leader, just before you move on, we did actually have a question received, which was subsequently withdrawn. And just for the record, the uh, questioner has asked if we could just make members aware the question did come in, but was withdrawn. So with your permission, could I just read the question out? Yes, of course. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So the question is, is as follows. Ash Meadow Committee welcomes the initiative to extend composting facilities elsewhere, but requests a statement of confidence from the Council that the extension will not, in any way, impact the service and income we have to date received for our own scheme, including the mowing arrangement of our playing fields. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'll just invite um, Mr Molyneux to comment on that, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, we have had conversations with the person who submitted the question and what we've actually done, actually, it was quite helpful because we've now made arrangements to go and talk to all the existing community composting schemes and they've all been contacted and we will, um, Mrs Moody and her team will be going to visit all those sites so, they, so that she can explain how we will um, manage their service using the, the proposed um, community composting proposal that we're going to discuss later on the agenda. Uh, thank you very much. That sounds a really good idea. And thank you, Mrs Moody. So the next item on the agenda is um, the executive forward plan, which is on page 14 of the agenda, if you'd like to look at it. Um, members of the executive, do you have any questions on the forward plan? Not for me. No. And if not, does anybody else have any questions on the forward plan? I think it's some setting out quite a good programme of work and no doubt other things will join the list for the later months um, as it evolves. But if there are no questions, we will move on to the next item, which is the housing crisis and in particular the Step On scheme, which is the new scheme for this month. Um, I'm due to be introducing that scheme, so I'll just find my notes. So, um, we know that many households in the South Hams will think home ownership 
is but a pipe dream. This scheme offers housing association tenants a helping hand to step on to the property ladder. The amount we are offering is deliberately directly comparable to the downsizing offer, but the possibility of helping aspirations is far greater. Home ownership is the dream of most families. This small leg up we are offering onto the property ladder could help aspiring families effectively save a deposit for an open market house later on. It also has the advantage of freeing up a socially rented property for a household who cannot yet aspire to home ownership, thus helping achieve one of our other desired outcomes of smarter occupation of existing affordable housing stock. <coughs> As the new conditions governing shared ownership properties work their way through, this offer will become even better for those aspiring to home own uh, to shared ownership properties. We believe this is the first scheme of its kind, and we're proud to be offering a truly aspirational and conservative scheme to South Ham's residents. Um, and I'll take questions if there are any from the executive, and if not from any members present or any members online. Right, um, well in that case, if there are no questions, I'll move the recommendations one and two on the report that the executive oh, recommend to council I have a the question. I have a there question. is a question. Should I hear something coming through? Oh yes, oh. I've got. Councillor Callahan's got a question. Oh, good morning. Um, yes, so, sorry. Um, you can presumably hear me all right. Um, can, can you tell me what you meant by at all, please? Can you hear me all right? No, we can't. Just hang on a bit, oh, a moment, right. please. Right. Okay, that's better. We can hear you now. Okay, um, I, just, what, I just heard you say. Um, oh, am I getting feedback? I just heard you say it was a. Did you hear you say it was a conservative scheme? I just wonder what you meant meant by that. I was a bit confused. Well, Denise, you can be confused. You're not a member of the Conservative Party, but it has always long been a conservative policy um, that home ownership is um, what we know that um, nations, families, and households aspire to. And we are moving towards that aspiration. OK, um, yeah, um, that's I see, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, as long as we um, as long as we're not uh, as long as we're moving so towards the end of the right to buy, I suppose that's, you know, that one didn't end too well. But anyway, thanks for that. I just wonder what you meant by that. Thank you. So I will move now to the recommendations that the executive. That, so the first one is that the executive recommend to council the adoption of a pilot of the step on scheme from the 1st of April 2022. And the second re recommendation is that the executive notes the initial funding of £60,000 will be taken from the £407,557 of the new homes bonus grant for 2022-23. Um, Second, thank you. Um, does anybody want to enter into any debate on this item? Um, Councillor Hopwood. Not so much debate, comment, if I may, please. Um, I just think this is one, one of the best things that this council has done for a long time. Um, giving young people, well, giving people of any age the chance to go on the property ladder because whether you're young or older we all have a right if we want to um, to um, aspire to own a property the, the the thing is whether we can or cannot afford it and I think this gives that um, just helps that little bit more um, helps towards a deposit for a house and opens up I would hope a whole new um, realm of people who will be able to get on the property ladder and just I think well done to, to um, Mrs Blake and her team who I know have worked incredibly hard to put this scheme together. Um, I think it's, 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 it's exemplary and um, we, I just am so glad to see it here today so well done to everybody, officer and members and I know Count Leader, you work particularly hard on this um, for bringing this to to the executive today. Thank you. 
Um, thank you, Councillor Hopwood. And I'd, I'd like to echo that. And I think the, the great thing is that it's all happened so quickly. So it just shows when you want to do something, it can happen quickly. And, uh, um, and it's really good. And it's, as I say, it's helping both ends of the spectrum. So it's help, we've got one scheme for helping people to downsize and one scheme for helping people aspire and move up on the scheme. So, And both schemes free up more properties for people who aren't in a position to do that, but who need a socially rented property. So it must be good all round. It won't, it won't make a huge difference, but it will make a difference. And that's the important thing. Right, so if we have no more comments or um, anything, shall we pass to um, the vote on this? Is everybody in favour of the recommendations? That's unanimous. Thank you, Leader. Sorry, the next item is the Community Composting Scheme, and I'm going to pass over to um, Councillor Baldry for this. Thank you, Leader. It's an enormous pleasure to introduce this paper. I'm sure members have read it. It is a culmination of what we agreed in February, was to allocate 200,000 to be transferred into a community composting earmark reserve. I would like, first of all, because that was only agreed in February, to congratulate uh, the team in the waste area, and in particular, Mrs. Moody, for turning it into this excellent paper in such a short space of time. The second tribute I would like to make is to existing composting schemes, which are our number across the district, and which will, of course, continue, and we will, we, we will be able to support them as well. Um, this is a good scheme. It is good for the environment and for climate change and biodiversity. It is good for the residents. It is good for communities, because communities will work together in producing the compost from their local area. Um, it is very, very welcome by everybody I have spoken to. Uh, if you read the paper, there's a lot of the background in paragraph two. Uh, and in paragraph three, we read about the support for local gardens and allotments, and also for social inclusion and for local communities. Um, I hope this will, and I'm sure it will, increase the uptake of local composting in the district, which will reduce the transport, reduce the amount which <coughs> we as a district have to collect to our brown bin service. Um, and a great deal of the detail is in, uh, of how the scheme will work is in the appendix. Uh, <coughs> paragraph 4.1 confirms that we will be supporting uh, local community composting groups <coughs> and we will provide manual labour and provide resource from the council to do so. Paragraph 4.2 tells people how to apply and the other thing in the appendix I think is important is that in 6.1 there will be an annual review. <coughs> We are in touch with, as um, Mr Molyneux has already said, with the local composting scheme. And if approved today, a leader, we intend to bring this new service, open it up for applications from the beginning of April. <coughs> Can I hand over then to Mrs Moody to say, would you like to fill in some of the stuff I have missed out? Thank you, Councillor Baldrin. Mrs Moody. Thank you very much, Councillor Baldrin. Um, I think you've pretty much summed it up, really. Um, officers have been doing a whole heap of um, research in terms of the um, annual expenditure um, and the income that these um, community composting sites receive and some of the challenges that they have in terms of operating the site. Um, and I think that the scheme that, that's proposed here today will um, overcome some of those challenges for some of the local groups. Um, and actually, as Councillor Baldry said, encourage some engagement. Um, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's important to notice with some of these schemes that it's not just about the community composting. Um, some of these schemes have actually broadened their horizons to, uh, to help with some of the, the wider waste issues like reuse, repair, recycle. Um, so, so they offer quite often a lot more than just um, the start-up of community composting. Thank you very much. Members, do you have any questions on this paper? 
there is a hand up. I can't see who it is. I don't know who KK is. And, and, and Councillor O'Callaghan, is your is that a residual hand, or is it? Um, oh, it is. Yes, it probably is. Yes, it is. Sorry. Yes, it is, sorry. Okay. Um, Councillor Councillor Kemp. Yep. Yes, it is. Sorry. Hello there. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Councillor Kemp. Hello. Okay. Um, I just wondered about under two point. Okay. There's an awful lot of feedback coming from my end. Under two point. Okay, there's an awful lot of feedback coming from my end. Members, the feedback might be coming for those, if any of those on the Teams call of are not on mute, of Councillor Kemp. Members, the feedback might be coming for those, if any of those on the team on mute, of Councillor Kemp. Councillor Kent, would you like to try again, please? Councillor Kent, would you like to try again, please? Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, Councillor Kemp. Okay, okay um, yeah. so under 2.8, it says no statutory obligation. Um, it, it, it sounds a bit mean, and, and uh, I wondered if, um, if that could be used as an, a reason to withdraw services at the drop of a hat. Um, so I just wondered if 2.8 could could be explained, please. Councillor Kemp, there is no statutory obligation to provide composting schemes. We're not being mean, we're being the opposite. We're being generous because we are providing one. Right, OK, but I just wondered um, if, if, if that... I'll, I'll let, sorry, I'll let Councillor Baldry, I'll let Councillor Baldry come in. Morning, Kate. Uh, Hi, I think Kate. I think you just said that we would withdraw services at a drop of a hat. That is not the way the council works. Any decision will be taken by the membership of this council. We will not take things at a drop of a hat. And it is my intention for as long as I remain in the good books of the leader and remain an executive member, it's my intention that we improve services rather than withdrawing them. Yes, that's exactly what I'm hoping for, Keith. It's just that when I read no statutory obligation, that's also what I read when um, when the garden waste service was withdrawn in the first place. So I just it just went off as a little alarm bell. That's all. You can switch your clock off now. All right. Thank you, Keith. Can I just remind um, members asking questions that it's not an opportunity for a conversation. You ask a question. And then you can come back with a supplementary if you want to, but you don't come back with a conversation, please. Now, I see that Councillor O'Callaghan um, has still got her hand up. Is this a new question, Councillor O'Callaghan? Yes, yes, sorry, a bit sorry. like Jack in the Box this morning. Um, yes, I do welcome this, of course. Um, just a question about um, sites. Um, certainly, I don't know about other areas uh, in the district, but certainly in Kingsbridge, I think our problem will be finding a site that's suitable size and location to actually implement this. Um, is this something that, um, you know, the, the towns and parishes will have? Sorry, or will the district be involved in, um, in sort of uh, sites? Yeah, good morning, Denise. Yes, it is a community morning. scheme. Who better to find the sites than the local people? Uh, sites will vary. Uh, they will, will, some will be <clears throat> more difficult than others uh, to, to lay out, but it will be down to the local people, as it is a local composting scheme, to identify sites 
which we in the South Hams and the Waste Team will be pleased to give advice on the suitability. OK, thank you very much. Um, if we... Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, a few questions on it. Um, and obviously, welcome the move, welcome the initiative. Um, there are comments in there about um, areas, place, not being too close together. Um, is there some clarification there as to, because there may be bigger towns, parishes close together, um, how that is going to be decided as to whether, you know, you may have two parishes close together. I don't know whether that's been thought about in this element. Thought about, but again, I'm sorry, I believe in local people deciding things, and the geography means that I think it is sensible, yes, the parishes get together occasionally. Uh, for example, Brixton has a very good scheme. It would be my hope that Yampton, which is also my parish, joins in the Brixton scheme, but just depends on local people and local discussions. I don't know if Sarah wants to add anything. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Baldry. Um, yeah, I think we, we've set out quite clearly in the guidance document that um, where there isn't currently provision, we will certainly prioritise that, and that seems only fair because there is access to community sites in other parts of the district. That being said, um, once we, we, we do receive the applications, and, and I'll just follow on from Councillor Baldry, that we will be welcoming applications from the 1st of April. However, from the 20th of March, um, local groups and, and residents can go onto our website there'll be further and more detailed information around the application process what that looks like time scales etc so so i would welcome people to come on the website from the 20th of march um, and and as the applications come in we will absolutely consider each one on a case-by-case -case basis okay thank you chairman the other th element that i've got is that um a question about support because obviously there's a lot of um, regulations to put in place licenses to achieve and for volunteers starting something up that may be sort of daunting to them is there any support from envisaged from this council to actually give them guidance and support in moving forward with that most of that is actually in the appendix but Sarah do you want to add Yep, thank you again. Um, so yes, you are quite right. Um, to operate these sites, you need a T23 exemption, which um, can be obtained free and online from the Environment Agency. Um, I will say again that on the 20th of March, all that information will be available. Um, we intend on setting up a dedicated email address so that um, uh, anybody who's wanting to set up one of these schemes can access it, ask as many questions as they like. And of course, we will be forthcoming with any information that we have. So yeah, there'll certainly be support there, Council along. Chairman, I think... Um Sarah has answered the rest of my questions because obviously there's going to be more detailed information available from the 20th. So, um, thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Long. Uh, Councillor Brazil. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Just a, qu a quick one. So, the eight days for shredding, um, I'm assuming that that's for free, is it? That's the cost is covered by the district council, or, or, or will the, or will the sites have to pay? Free for new and existing schemes. Right. Um, if there aren't any more questions, um, Councillor Baldry, would you like to move the recommendations? Uh, the recommendations are at the top of paper. There are one, two, and three. I move the recommendation. Uh, and I also, at the same time, draw attention of members to Appendix A, which I think is a brilliantly written document and covers a great deal of the detail of how this will work. Move the recommendation. Second. Any comments? Councillor Hotwood. Um, Chairman, I never thought I'd sit here this morning and hear that Garden Waste was restarting on the 29th of March. Um, I always knew it would restart, but I didn't realise it was going to be quite that soon, which is fantastic news. Um, and it, it was only suspended, so it wasn't ever stopped. It was suspended. So I'm, I'm really pleased it's, it's starting again, um, just in time for the growing season. But to have a community composting scheme run alongside that instead of 
which I think is where um, a lot of residents thought we were going with this community compost scheme, is, is really a credit to this council um, managing to, to um, hold FCC to account like they have done and to um, steer them back to restarting a service that is vital for our residents free of charge still so there's going to be no cost for the garden waste service unlike in other councils in the district and to give money to um, towns and parishes to start a, a recycling scheme a composting scheme so all credit to everybody involved and that would include yourself councillor Baldry. Um, i think it's a what a day so far housing crisis money going to composting garden waste start and i can't wait for the rest of the agenda thank you chairman thank you councillor Hopwood. not on my behalf but on behalf of the team thank you very much councillor Hopwood. um uh, councillor hawkins um can i congratulate councillor baldry and the officers at southampton council for bringing this forward so fast and so efficiently um in my county patch, I've had a composting project for many, many years. And with Devon County Council slowly but surely having to reduce their financial help to that, I know other schemes in the area collapsed, which was obviously a great shame. This is really good news. It's the kind of thing that we should be doing, and hopefully we'll be doing more of it in the future. Um, it's just so exciting because parishes and towns can all work together to actually achieve a scheme for them. It's good for the environment. It's good for their own parishes. Um, it's a really exciting project. So uh, I know there's several in the area that are already biting at the bit to um, put that bid in. So I wish them every success in the future. And I'm really pleased that the scheme is also going to support those projects which have been going for many, many years that have struggled to a certain extent in keeping going. And this is actually giving them a lot of help and assistance to to thrive and get better and bigger so really good news thank you councillor hawkins right, well i don't see other, any other hands going up i can't see any online either so shall we pass to the oh councillor baldry oh, sorry I'm, I'm i'm thanking everyone for their support but also uh, what has been said uh, already is i want to stress my admiration for the existing composting schemes mm -hmm for which I've been enormous benefit in their local community and volunteers have worked very hard and they will of course continue with our support but I think they have been brilliant in the existing schemes and I'm sure the new schemes will be just as good. I think there's every hope they will be Councillor Baldry. So let's move to the recommendations. Is everybody in favour of the three recommendations in the paper? That's unanimous. Thank you, Ida. Sorry, we're moving on to the planning improvement plan update, which this month is the local validation list and the planning charter. These two go hand in hand, although the connection may not be immediately obvious to everyone. The local validation list sets out the information we require for various types of planning applications over and above the basic list laid down by the um, national planning policy guidance. Each local authority can draw up its own list. These should be proportionate to the nature of the application and should be regularly updated. The present list went out to consultation in the autumn and is already in use. It can be reached through the link on the report at page 43. Um, you'll see that it's quite complex, but it does set out what is required for each type of application individually. So it's not difficult for applicants to follow. The planning charter is long overdue. It will require a good deal of goodwill to work, but it's absolutely necessary. For too long, we've been planning too, too positively for our own good. Allowing applicants multiple goes at submitting revised plans 
clogs up the system and is unproductive. It produces the log jams we are all experiencing. A more rigorous registration procedure combined with only allowing the most minor of amendments should, should unclog the system, which in turn will allow our officers to work much more productively and better meet the um, deadlines that are required without time extensions. I am anticipating a bit of a chicken and egg situation getting there, but a much more rigorous approach to agents is to be welcomed, as at the moment uh, they often find it too easy to blame the council rather than um, telling the clients that they in fact are um, holding things up. We also need to brush up ourselves and it will be a good discipline for us too to stick to the Charter. Um, but it's no more than should be expected from a good modern council operating an efficient planning service. I'm determined to make this work and I think there is the determination on the part of officers too, so I welcome it um, and commend it um, to you, Executive. Now, are there any questions? No questions from members either? I'll throw it open to the floor. Okay, so in which case I will move the recommendations. Um, the Three at the top of the paper, seconded, thank you very much. And open it up to comments or... No? Oh, Councillor Hawkins. Um, I'm going to count, copy Councillor Hopwood. I think it is a really good news story as well because as councillors and some of us are parish councillors as well, we always hear that it's the council's fault for delaying a process. And I think actually ensuring that the applicants put in what we require from them firsthand actually will cut that out and uh, speed the process forward, as you've said. So I think it's a, it's a good thing. So just good news. Yes, Councillor Hawkins, just to be clear, I think we've always made it clear what we're expecting from them. But now there's some, really some obligation on them to get it right, because actually, um, if they don't get it right, we should just be saying to them, look, you haven't submitted X, Y or Z, so go away until you've got it sorted out. And that, I think, will make the agents stop and think, because they're going to have to go back to their clients and say, I've submitted the application, but unfortunately, I had to withdraw it because I didn't submit the right things or uh, make up some other excuse. So... Um, and, that's exactly uh, and I'm not I'm not blaming the agents every time, but I think there is quite a lot of that um, playing us off against their clients. So um, I, I really uh, welcome this as a more straightforward and transparent way of working. Um, but we've we've got to step up to the plate as well. So and that's why you're a leader, because you could put it far better than I could. Well, <laughs> so. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that um, necessarily. So, OK. So, um, if oh, Councillor Hopwood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, paragraph 2.3, it's, um, it's good to see by, by updating this validation checklist, um, it leads to, um, part, to helping our climate change event agenda by um, applicants having to um, provide information on how they will reduce their carbon footprint um, it's small incremental changes like this that go towards the, the total needed for climate change. So it always, it's always a quite, you know, we, we're always being told, I know I was at a climate change working group last week where we were being told that our members were wondering what was being done. It's small little things like this that we are asking um we are asking people who are who have a contact with this centre with this council how they are reducing their carbon footprint it's not always all about the council reducing theirs it's about people using our services and how they reduce theirs as well so that is a is a plus on this yeah and councillor hotwood because the local validation list is already in operation there are already planning applications that are getting turned down because they are not providing the right information. And I think when the updated um, Dev32 um, conditions come in, which we should be consulting on soon, um, there will be a lot more that um, applicants are going to have to submit to show that they are complying with um, 
what we want to show that they are reducing their carbon footprint. And it's also going to be much more difficult to knock down a house and rebuild one because you're going to have to show how you can regain, you can recapture all that carbon that you're using um, over a certain period of time. So it's going, to, it's going to become actually quite complex. So I hope, I hope the officers are all ready for it because they're going to have to do quite a lot of looking at things and calculating. But anyway, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll all work out. Um, any more questions? Because if not, we'll pass to the vote on the three recommendations at the top of the paper. Is everybody in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much. So the next item is item 10, the regeneration and investment strategy, which is also mine, but I think I'm nearly at the end of mine now. Um, so to introduce this paper, the current revision of the policy is because of the new Public Works Loan Board borrowing rules, which make borrowing outside the local authority boundary no longer acceptable. It's also timely to update the strategy to align it better with the aims of Better Lives for All. The conditions for commercial acquisitions need to remain agile and flexible. They are only used rarely, but it is important to retain um, these facilities. There are no changes to borrowing thresholds or the already approved practices through which the strategy is deployed. Most of the policy remains largely unchanged. Um, members, do you have any questions? Are there any questions from um, other members present? Right. Well, in that case, I'll move the recommendation at the top of the paper that so the... Secondly, I was just going to read it out, but thank you. That the executive recommend to council to approve and an update to the commercial investment strategy in the form of the newly titled regeneration and investment strategy contained at Appendix A, where it's all set out. Um, any comments? Okay, so let's move to, um, to the recommendation. Is everybody in agreement? That is unanimous. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much. Right, so over to Councillor Bastone for item 11, the month 10 revenue budget monitoring report. Sorry. And we are currently estimating uh, additional car parking income of £395,000 and Dartmouth lower, lower ferry income of 190000 In addition, employment estates income is anticipated to be over budget by £120,000 in the year and 80000 of this additional income has been built into the base budget for 22-23. The position of the main income streams for the period 1st of April 2021 to the 31st of January 2022 is summarised in the table on page 69 of the agenda. Members will note that planning, planning income is continuing to look healthy for the current year with additional income of £390,000 being received in the first 10 months of the year. This relates to one-off large planning applications, mainly in respect of Sherford. Some of this income, £70,000, will be offset, uh, of the, it will offset the additional staffing costs within the, the Development Management Service for the current year. 
At the executive meeting on the 14th of October, it was recommended to fund six additional posts a shared, shared with West Devon, of course, from additional planning income as part of the planning improvement plan. The second recommendation of this report asks the executive to recommend to council to transfer £320,000 of the additional planning income, uh, that's 390000 less than seventy for the staffing costs, into the planning policy and major developments earmarked reserve at the end of 21-22 to manage fluctuations in planning income in the future. This income stream is notoriously difficult to forecast and can be subject to fluctuations skewed by the larger one-off planning applications. Therefore, it was felt prudent to transfer the additional income for 21-22 into the planning earmark reserve to safeguard against these fluctuations in future years. Thank you, Leader. Thank you very much, Councillor Bastogne. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank um, Mrs Henstock and Mrs Buckle very much for um, pulling all this together and also looking after our reserves so well and providing um, in moments of feast for the famines that might turn up later. So um, thank you very much for that. Um, does anybody have any questions on this paper? Councillor Long. It's a minor question on the car and boat park income. I wonder if somebody can give a sort of greater explanation. There's obviously it refers to the additional income of 395,000 and there's a reference to um, mainly from Bigbury and the Salkham boat park and North Sands. And I know the season was busy and extended, but these car parks are normally always full. So I'm fascinated how the additional income has been generated in North Sands and the boat park. I suspect I might know that it could actually be boats, not cars, parking on the car park. But um, Mrs. Buckle, do you want to help us out on that? Yeah. Um, thank you, thank you, Leader. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, we've done an analysis of all of the car parks, and it is mainly those two car parks um, at Bigby and Solcom that are showing that, in comparison to previous years, they are significantly up on the income. Um, and, and we're seeing that over all the months. It's not just the summer months, so. Um, yeah, we can provide further analysis of, of that, but but there is definitely more throughput in those car parks. I you know I'd be fascinated to see that because you know we know the season's been extended, and if it's having that much impact, then that's got to be worthwhile for AK, the economy of the town, so people are spending time. But I was interested the boat park. The boat park has a limit amount of capacity, so there seemed to be some anomaly there. So if I could have some information, that'd be great. Right. Thank you. Um, Councillor Birch. Oh, thank you. Um, page 66, um, item N, the waste and recycling. There's a shortfall of 240,000. And I quote from the report, it says, the 240,000 shown in the report is a ballpark estimate of the cost the council experienced in 2020 stroke 21 due to the delay of the Devon Alliance service, etc. Could we have a fuller explanation as to how this figure has been arrived at? And bearing in mind, uh, there is provision within our contract with FCC for uh, deductions in respect of delays, etc. So I wonder if we could have a fuller explanation, please. That's the Unless Councillor wants to do it. Um, I'm, I'm not the expert on this. Um, Mr Molyneux is going to be the expert in a minute, but I should just say this is a ballpark figure as stated. It is dependent upon discussions taking place at present with the contractor. A final figure will emerge at the end of those discussions. Mr Molyneux. Thank you, Councillor Baldry. Um, so, so without getting into the contractual um, discussion, um, Councillor Birch, there is a direct correlation in terms of loss of recycling income. So because some of the service is actually um, 
go into um, the um, what I've got the words the the, the me mechanical recycling facility at Plymouth. That income isn't as great as would be for full clean recycled material. So we we've, we've got loss of material there. We've got additional costs that we incurred in terms of managing the contracts, and you'll be well aware that the the actions the council is taking in terms of contractually to try and recover some of those costs. So at the minute, we are losing money compared to previous years on the amount of recycling and the amount of income we get from that recycling as a direct result of, I would say, FCC's poor performance. You, you may, Councillor Birch. How optimistic are you, or are we, in recovering this £240,000 shortfall from FCC? Um, I don't wish to comment on what is a, an ongoing confidential discussion with the contractor. Thank you, Mr. Molyneux. Um, has anybody else got any further questions? Um, if not, would um, you like to move the recommendations? Move the two recommendations on page 61. I'll second those. I'll second them. Right. Has anybody got any comments on this paper they wish to make beyond questions? Um, Councillor Baldry. Thank you. Mention has already made, been made of the increase in car parking and boat char charges. Um, this is a financial paper, but the good news is it means that last year we had increased visitors to the South Hams. We have little control over people using our car parks. They need to come here. They need to enjoy the South Hams, and that is why they come, and that is, in my view, why the income is up. Uh, and uh, long may it continue. Yeah, I think one of the things we have noticed is that the shoulder season has been much busier and much longer than it has previously. And I think that is also a good thing. Conversely, um, Councillor Baldry, they do fill up the waste bins, don't they, all over the place? <laughs> we will continue to empty the waste bins as a very good price to pay for the increase in visitors. Right, thank you very much. Okay, so if there are no more comments, let's, let's pass to the vote on this one. Is everybody in favour of the two recommendations? That is unanimous. Thank you, Leader. Thank you. So the next item is... Item 12, um, which is the Capital Programme Monitoring Report. Now, um, Appendix A does contain some exempt information. So if anybody wants to ask any questions on Appendix A, we will have to move into exempt sessions. So if you can try and keep your questions and remarks um, to the paper in general rather than specific items, it would be helpful. Um, Councillor Bastone. Uh, thank you, Leader. Um, a bit shorter introduction on this one. This is our standard capital monitoring report, which is presented to executive once a quarter. The report covers the period 1st of April 2021 to 31st of January 2022, and asks the executive to note the content. The report advises members of the progress on the individual schemes within the approved capital program, including an assessment of their financial position. All of the capital projects are within their approved budget. Members are asked to approve an increase to the play area renewals reserve for the forecast underspent on play parks of £34,500. This will bring the total reserve to £128,000. A summary of the capital programme is shown in exempt Appendix A. The award of contracts is subject to the Council's procurement rules on competitive tending and therefore the allocated budget is commercially sensitive. Thank you, Leo. Thank you very much, Councillor Bastone. Um, members of the executive, do you have any questions for Councillor Bastone? Um, Councillor Baldry. Sorry, Councillor Bastone. Can you just amplify a bit more why the play area 
budget is underspent? Uh, is it because we have not had sufficient applications from other people, or is it because of a delay in doing the work? Can you just tell us a bit more about that? I think Mrs. Buckle can. Uh, oh, and no, leader, we do have. Rob's on the screen. Rob's on the screen, is he? Oh, so he is. Okay. Hi, good. Good morning, members. Um, yeah, I've been asked to dial into this um, for, for this very reason. Um, yeah, to give a bit of an update, um, I think the reason really for the, the underspend has been uh, the fact that we've drawn in quite a lot of Section 106 funding as match. So we've needed less from the, the originally forecast uh, capital pot that, that you kindly assigned for these projects. So we, we've delivered some of the projects um, alongside good Section 106 match funding. Um, but we, we do have this underspend. So the underspend that previously you'd agreed that we could uh, carry into a reserve was to fund um, some extra projects m moving forward over the next few years. And, and this is asking for a further 35,000 to be set aside. Um, what I have done anticipating this and having been mindful of the questions that were asked at, at last executive when the capital monitoring report was considered, um, I have visited all of our South Ham's owned play areas. Um, and I've effectively come up with a, a forward forecast of the projects that I anticipate coming online within the next five years. So I've got short term projects, which um, I'll be tendering immediately and within the next 12 months, medium term projects, which are the next 18 to 36 months. And then what I would call long term projects, which are three to five years. Um, coincidentally, uh, that, that does uh, come to the sort of sum of money that we've got um, in terms of the underspend. Um, so we've referenced within the report that about 90,000 of that will be um, tendered and put out to contract relatively soon. Um, the remaining the remaining sum of money I would forecast being spent over the next five years, and I've got a fairly clear schedule now of the exact projects that I anticipate that money being spent on. Um, it, it wasn't appended to this report um, through whichever mechanism it, it could be circulated at a later stage to executive members, if that's useful. Thank you very much for that. Does that answer the question? I shall need to reflect. Thank you, Leader. But does that mean that when these projects come in, that there will be a change in the reported figure, probably at the next report? Uh, can Mr. Skoura answer that question, if you heard it? Uh, yep, certainly did. Um, we can continue to update um, the figures as, as required through the, the regular monitoring reports. I mean, if it's useful to members, and I, I could have this discussion perhaps with Lisa separately, we could perhaps, it might be too much information for this report, but we could perhaps append the table that I've prepared and, and you can hold me to account against that table if that's useful. Um, we think, we, we seem to think that would be a good idea, please. So if we could have that next time, thank you very much. Okay, um, any more questions from anybody else? Um, Councillor Birch. Yeah, in Appendix B, um, which is headed Appendix C on 106 monies. Uh, what what does PIF mean in the one, two, three, fourth column? No. Um, Nobody knows. Sorry, sorry. Which which page is that, Councillor Birch? <laughs> sorry, it's page um, six ninety eight. It's the one, two, three, fourth column. It's PIF. It's got. I just, I'm trying to fathom it out. I couldn't find any reference to it anywhere. I think it is a term that's related to section 106. As I think it means it's in progress. Well, um, in, in, in progress it means is if you look, it's under development. I mean, for example, there is a um, 106 man is in Totnes and it's got against it PIF. And I'm just interested. In, it's that's mentioned throughout. Just yes, um, yeah, I will find out for you, Councillor Birch. Yeah, I'll I include it in the members' well bulletin well. on Friday. Yeah, thank you. Can, just, just supplementary to that is there's an awful lot of money. There's six and a half million pounds in Section 106 monies, and um, my concern, as uh, the question is, is the it, is the executive concerned uh, that uh, there is adequate time and effort being put into ensuring that this money is is spent sooner rather than later. Um, 
I think I'll answer that more for you, Councillor Birch. I think there's always been concern that the Section 106 monies are not being spent fast enough, but I, I think they are being spent faster now than I can ever recall them being spent by this council before. And I would always emphasise that this list is published regularly and therefore is available to members. And it is up to the local members to talk to their communities and their parish and town councils to get this money spent. Um, I know that it's something um, that I do quite regularly to remind them that it's there. Um, and I wish other members would too, because it does it does need spending. And, and um, you know, we've, we've got the officers who will help, um, will coordinate with the town and parish councils to get it spent. But it really is up to the local communities to identify projects that the money can be spent on. Yeah, I'd like to add to that, really, because it is down to the local members, really, to push the parish councils. I know in my ward, it, um, if you've got surplus in somewhere like Totnes, we we willing to spend it for you, you know. Um, I think the Chief Executive would like to make a comment. Thanks very much, Leader. Yes, um, with, with regard to the delivery of the capital programme, we have been reviewing the capacity of the organisation to deal with this, and we're, we will be bolstering the capacity within the assets team uh, with regard to the capital programme, uh, which will help with both the delivery of the programme itself, but it will also help in terms of the spend against that programme as well. Um, we're we'll bringing further information back both through the capital monitoring reports, which you have regularly through the exec, um, and also through the reporting of the delivery against the uh, the council's corporate strategy leader. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Bates. I, I think one comment I'd like to make is that some of these are time limited, and I think it would be useful if um, if the members who have a time limited um, item in their ward could be reminded of that um, either by um, Alexis or um, Rob Sekula so that they actually treat it as urgent to get back to their communities and remind them that this money needs spending. And I think probably a two-year limit on that is about right because it takes some time to work up a project and get it, get it spent. So I'd appreciate it if that could happen. Um, with that, um, if there are no more questions, Councillor Bastian, would you like to move the recommendation? Sorry. Um, I'll move the two recommendations which are set out on page 79. Thank you. Is there um, any comments anybody wants to make on the rest of this paper? Oh, I'll second it. Sorry, need seconding. Any, any comments? Uh, Councillor Hopp. Sorry, it's a question. I apologise. That's all right. Carry Can on. you just add, so if um, there is section 106 money and it says that um, I'm looking at um, open space sports and recreation 3149 the land east of Allen Farm Allen Lane Tamerton oh it's gone um, well, it's, it had a date in there of 2020 um, and then it says to be spent within five years is it far, but the but the site is still under construction. Is it five years from the 20 date, 20 date or is it five years from the end of the build? Uh, Councillor Hotwood, it will say in the Section 106 agreement, so you need to refer to that. Oh, thank you. But is it the question? That was just an example one that I yes. picked out, but there are lots of time-limited ones, and I wondered if it was from the end of the development or the, when that time started. This is Bob. Yep, thank you, Leader. Um, the time limit starts from the date that we receive the Section 106 money in our bank account. So that, that's when the time starts um, ticking, if you like. So it's the date from the day that we receive the money in the Council's bank account. Thank you. Um, Councillor O'Callaghan, you wanted to ask a question. Yeah, I just, thank you. Um, I just wonder, in terms of the play area reserve, if there's an underspend, does that 
does that then mean that if if a particular council believes that there's um, some improvements in play areas that they would like, does that mean they can now bid to actually get some money to do that? Um, I've also got a skate park committee in Kingsbridge wanting some money, which I gather would be through 106. Um, so I've asked about that as well. Does that mean there's now more money available for for this sort of thing um, immediately as we're spending a bit less in this area than we, we had thought? Just wondering how it works on ground. Do you want to answer that? Rob, um, Rob, would you, Mr. Scooter, can you answer that question, please? Yeah, certainly. So, so again, the um, the table which which I can circulate in due course has got identified play areas now for the remainder of that underspend against distinct projects. So, uh, my suggestion would be that it's effectively accounted for, um, albeit that there is that underspend, it it, it would now be fully accounted for. Um, it, it may well be. Uh, Councillor Callahan, that, that the player as you have in mind are already on the list. Um, skate park, obviously we've had a couple of emails about it, um, and 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 I probably would be looking to make a bid um, in October through the the usual means of, of bidding for future capital projects. Um, but but I think that would be separate again to this particular play park pot. Right. I, I've also asked through the 106 as well. Is it Alexis who deals with that? Yeah, I think in, in, in Kingsbridge's case, um, it's my okay. understanding that there isn't a great deal of 106 funding that could be used for the skate park project. Um, but but certainly we'll we'll have that dialogue with Alexis moving forward. All right. Yes. Uh, thank you, Councillor Birch. I have an answer to your um, PIF question. Yes. Paid in full. So that means the clock is there ticking. Are. There you go. All right. <laughs> It's so obvious when you know, isn't it? <laughs> we can move to the vote now. Um, is everybody in favour with the recommendations on page 79? That's unanimous, thank you, Edith. Right, so the next... The next report, um, item 13, now again, um, this is on the Fusion Lifestyle Leisure Contract Support Update. This paper does um, contain some exact information, so if we can refrain from mentioning too many figures other than those in the recommendations, then we should be able to get through this without going into exempt session. Um, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Leader. Can I thank uh, both Lisa and Chris for bringing this report forward to us? Um, we have the recommendations, as you see, from one to five. Uh, also, just like to welcome Peter King from Fusion. Um, I would like to thank Peter publicly for all the hard work uh, and effort that you and your team do at all the four leisure centres that we have in the South Hams. Um, I would also just like to say that Southampton District Council, in my view, have four excellent leisure centres in our four main towns. Uh, they're well staffed and I know that we are constantly chasing and asking you to do extra work for us, uh, which you are always very helpful with. Uh, moving to the report and um, my introduction. Uh, obviously, during the past couple of years, COVID-19 pandemic has had a major impact on the provision of our leisure centres across the South Hams and obviously the whole country. Centres were closed for very long periods and parts of 2020 and again at the start of 2021, only reopening last April. Business has been greatly affected and the recovery has been very challenging and uh, we meet um, Fusion with officers on a regular basis, on a quarterly basis, and we uh, ask for those figures to be given to us. <clears throat> Throughout the pandemic as a council, we have supported Fusion with advice and funding, including our allocation of the National Leisure Recovery Fund. In addition, this report recommends we help Fusion to continue its business recovery by mitigating further the impacts of a pandemic 
by adjusting the management and contract fee profile. This does not alter the overall amount paid by Fusion to Southampton District Council, rather the timing process, the cash flow and revenue income we receive from Fusion. Our leisure centres play a vital role in the health and well-being of our local communities and visitors. They, keep, they act as an important community hub for people to be active and healthy. And if you are on Fusion's Facebook page, they are constantly working with local groups um, and those local, local groups much appreciate what you do uh, in working with them. We have kept all centres open when it was possible and since last April usage has increased steadily each month. I am pleased to see that from January our centres saw their highest usage and are nearly getting back to pre-Covid levels. Being parochial for two seconds, because I visit our leisure centre often, I'm sorry, I have to. Um, I met Mark in Dartmouth last week, and he had uh, the increase above the project was over, uh, I think it was 100% extra of what you wanted. So that's really good. And I know that's happening across the board, across the other three centres as well. So that's why I'm saying that. Opening hours are being extended. More activities and classes are taking place and more residents are making use of our leisure centres. Hopefully this will continue into the future. Um, I would just like to say this is a course part of the Southampton District Council strategy of well-being. Um, and it's a good news story in my view. We have had to help Fusion over the last couple of years, but we have no closures of leisure centres like unlike Cornwall uh, and I'm amazed that Cornwall is considering closing the likes of Falmouth and I think the other one is Launceston I can't believe they're actually taking that process but I would just like to thank uh, Fusion for all the hard work and Peter and Lisa oh, sorry Chris and Lisa for all the hard work and effort in helping thank you Lena thank you very much Councillor Hawkins um, now has anybody got any questions Councillor Baldry Thank you. Um, right at the end, uh, in page 107, under financial implications, uh, we read that the, this is going to be funded from the uh, uncommitted balance of 481,000 in the COVID losses earmarked reserve. Uh, what else could that money, this is a financial question, not necessarily directed at you, Councillor Hawkins, what else is that money available to be spent on if it is not going to be spent on fusion? Lisa, would you like to come in, please? Sorry, um, sorry Mrs. Buckle, I apologise. I do apologise. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Lita. Um, yes, so just a bit of background about that COVID funding. So when the pandemic started, uh, there was tranche funding which came from the government um, to help councils with the cost of COVID and the impact of COVID on our financial <coughs> position. The 481,000 that is in the COVID reserve was the fourth tranche of COVID funding, that was 100,000, and the fifth tranche of government COVID funding, which was another 381,000, which came in um, at, at the early part of the financial year. So it's, so it's the fourth and fifth tranche that totals the 481. Um, that money is unring fenced. So th the money that we got from government did not come with any specific grant conditions. Um, so in terms of the conditions of that grant funding, it is unring fenced. Mem members agreed to put that money into an earmark reserve um, specifically to meet COVID losses. And I think what we were concerned about was certainly our income streams and um, undoubtedly the, uh, the income stream for, from the leisure contract. Um, you know, there's, there's no doubt that leisure has been one of the worst impacted industries um, from COVID. Thank you, Leader. Um, thank you, Mrs. Buckle. I think that makes it quite clear that that was um, leisure centres are areas where councils have made big losses, and this these grants were specifically designed to help out um, in that, those sort of areas where councils were struggling. No, Mrs. Buckle's answer to the question: It is not earmarked for leisure. It could be spent on other areas. Could be spent of, on anything of where losses have been incurred. Thank you. Yep. Taking a question. 
you can do, but put your microphone on so that everybody knows what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. Uh, Mr King, um, can I ask a question that I know other councillors would ask? How are you ensuring that the um, outreach of fusion is developing in the next next 12 months? Because I know that is a concern of some councillors. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the question. The, um, we have an annual um, sport and community development plan, which is submitted via John Parkinson, that we've developed um, over the next year to increase our outreach. So that's increasing funding, so where we can uh, leverage things like uh, dementia-friendly programs, um, but also to incre increase our community awareness. We are finding, through some of the work that we're doing at the moment, clubs are returning to us. We've had 51 clubs return and also 21 schools, which is a key priority for us. So we're working on enhancing those relationships. But to answer your query, it sits in the annual plan that we're working to coincide with the council. Thank you. There, there was a hand up, but it seems to have gone down. Um, whoever put it up, do you want to come in or not? Um, it, it wasn't your. It, it, it wasn't yours, Councillor Birch, but you can come in. <laughs> you can. Right. Uh, can I have? Uh, pl pl is it? No. Let me start again. Uh, right. The shortfall. I mean, it it's, looks as though it's in the region of six hundred thousand pounds. Does that include the Totnes Leisure Centre? Bearing in mind there is a different. Uh, uh, set up there in respect of Tadpole and that being the case uh, are there any demands being made on Tadpole or does this cover as they say the full Monty uh, Mr Book would you answer that for us please thank you um, leader. The, um, the answer to the question is that the figures exclude .ness uh, leisure centre Supplement. So, so, how is that? How is it anticipated that the shortfall in uh, Totnes be addressed? So, um, the shortfall is not included either because it's separate. It's, so, the the direct contractual considerations to Infusion and the Opera and Totnes Leisure Centre are, are theirs, and actually, I'm not party to what agreements they have reached. Right, Councillor Birch, if you want more information, I'm, I dare say you can get it outside the meeting. Yeah, I will. Right, if we've got no more questions, um, Councillor Hawkins, would you like to move the recommendations? I suggest you don't read them out because they're quite long. But I'm, glad you, I'm glad you didn't wish me to read them out. Uh, I'd like to move the recommendations one, two, three, four, and five. Thank you, Leader. Um, I'll second those. Right, now, do we have any comments or debate on the contents of the paper? Um, Councillor Baldry first, and then we'll have Councillor Brittle. I'm not going to rehearse the old arguments I've had about whether we in local authorities should be providing municipal leisure facilities. I voted against the granting of the contract in the first place. Purely on those grounds, I do not think it is the role of local authorities to run either directly or indirectly uh, leisure centres and municipal swimming pools. Those days are long over. What concerns me, and I'm talking about the recommendations on the paper, is that it is not the first time that we have been asked to fund a shortfall for fusion. I think they will be coming back again uh, for more money in the future. And I think the time has come for us to call a halt to it all, that I will be voting against the recommendation because I think we should no longer be pouring our money, council taxpayers' money, and in this case, government money, also council, also taxpayers' money, uh, in, in, into any more. We need to bite the bullet, and we need to release fusion uh, from the contract and allow them to run it. Uh, uh, I know the whole industry, uh, local authority, leisure centres, uh, not-for-profit organisations, uh, and private organisations have had a seriously bad time. But I fear we'll be putting more and more money 
more and more reports will come back asking for us to provide this funding. I should be voting against Leader. Thank you, Councillor Baldry. Whatever the requirements um, or the not requirements of what the council has to do or doesn't have to do, um, I think it is expected of councils that they should run some leisure centres because most councils do. It's been a torrid time for leisure centres through the pandemic for no fault of their own. And I would remind you that the contract has saved us considerable amounts of money annually, um, which the contributions we're having to make at the moment in no way um, match the amount that is being saved. So all in all, um, whilst it's not welcome that we've got to help them out, it is a consequence of the pandemic. We have got, at the moment, the money that was given to us exactly for that kind of expenditure. Um, and my suggestion would be that we carry on doing it, wh whatever you feel. But I, you're entitled to your views on this. Briefly coming back, if, if I may, if my suggestion in the first place had been accepted and we had passed the whole operation over on a 99-year lease, we would have saved even more money. You're probably right, Councillor Baldry, but that wasn't what was on the table at the time. Um, Councillor Birch. Yeah. I mean, as this is a, re a recommendation to Council, I'll, I'll hold my fire until full Council, but can I just make the point that I feel that this report is slightly misleading or may be misleading in that it makes no reference at all to the situation in Totnes. If you look at page 102, there is reference to Totnes in this report uh, on two occasions there. And yet there's no mention at all that this proposal is going before full council does not cover the shortfall or possible shortfall at Totnes. And I would hope that if the report is going to full council, that the report does deal with the Totnes situation. I think it's important that members are aware of the situation in respect of all the leisure centres and not just three of them. Thank you. Councillor Hawkins. Um, could Mr King give us some sort of update on negotiations between Tadpole and Fusion? I don't think this is the right place and time, but there may well be a, a time um, later, and depending on how we exceed to Councillor Birch's request. Sorry, Councillor Brazil. Um, thank you, Judy. Uh, I, I'm... I, I see that the recommendation is the full council, so 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 like John, you know, we'll have our chance at full council. Um, but I am disappointed that both this report and indeed the report on the regeneration and investment strategy haven't that haven't come to or are going to um, audit. Um, we're talking about considerable amounts of money here. Uh, and the risks involved. Um, I think audit. This is exactly the kind of thing that audit should be looking at in a, in a great detail, um, in order to make uh, recommendations or comments um, uh, forward. Because uh, uh, it, it seems to me, when you look at the audit agenda, that's just it's just you know basically just ticking boxes about internal external audit you know lists letters things like that and not really actually delving into some of the more risky things that this council are involved in your comment is noted councillor brisa right any other comments because if not we'll pass to the vote on this one is everybody in favor apart from councillor baldry with the recommendations on page 99. That is five in favour, thank you, Leader. Are those against? With one vote against, thank you, Leader. Thank you very much. Right, so we're coming towards the end. Now, um, the next item, 14A and 14B, refer to overview and scrutiny um, meeting um, recommendations, but actually, I think it would be easier to refer everybody back to the minutes of um, the last meeting of the executive, 
where our counter recommendation on the climate change um, working group's conclusions are laid out, I think, but I mm, might have trouble finding them. Hang on, I'm just. Oh, um, they're on screen. Right, they're on the screen. And you have the two, um, the two changes which the Climate Change Working Group wished to make to our recommendation um, as we had counter-presented it. So they want, to, um, they want the action plan to be updated within three months, not six months, which, given that it's got to be updated anyway, seems reasonable. And they're asking that the debt and carbon plan will be monitored regularly um, rather than just monitored. So, um, has anybody got any questions or does anybody want to say anything on this? You want to say something? No, just Tom. Um, Tom, do you... Um, only to thank, I thank the Task and Finish group for the work they've done on it and subject to... Drew's any comments that um, he's Mr. Powell's got. Um, I don't have a problem with it. Good. Go with Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Powell's saying no, he hasn't got any further comments. Um, Councillor Birch. Yes. Um, yes. It, uh, just to make this clear, there was a recommendation that came out of uh, <coughs> ONS as a result following the completion of the task and finish groups rec um, uh, task. Um, and the, the was I think my memory so I haven't got it in front of me, but the recommendation that came from ONS uh, was A to H or something like that, the full amount. And the my understanding, and I think um, this can be confirmed by uh, uh, Drew, is that the only two paragraphs that uh, were um, we were being reconsidered were A and B, and therefore A and B was returned to the uh, task and finish group and that's what you've just looked at. I think what's important is not is that the whole of the recommendation that came from ONS, the A to H or whatever it was, is included in the minutes of this meeting. In other words, you are not only dealing with A and B, but you're having the, the full recommendation. So it's in this report for future reference. Otherwise, I think the rest of the uh, the recommendation m m may get lost in the mists of time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Now, if you turn to page 185 of the minutes for the 4th of November, that the recommendations were in fact A, B, C, D and E. A and B have been compressed into one on this report. Um, two, um, Two is D, and three is E. So that begs the plan, where, um, where has C gone? Um, can't, uh, Mr Powell, can you help us out on that? Um, certainly, Chair. Yeah. Um, C was the subject of a separate report that came to the executive, which is around the um, uh, Community Climate Fund. So that was dealt with at that meeting, I believe. I think Mr. White may better confirm. Mr. Through you, Leader, Mr. Powell is absolutely correct. Uh, little C at the time was dealt with by a standalone agenda report. Uh, and you're dead right. A and B have in effect been amalgamated into one, which is on the screen now. The original D is part two, which is now on the screen, and E is part three. So it's those three elements which are still outstanding. <clears throat> thank, thank you very much. And as for three, um, urgent consideration being given to identifying additional funds. Um, I understand that um, extra help is being organised for Adam Williams, but it's coming internally, so there won't be any extra costs. Mr Parr, would you like to say a few words? Yes, certainly. Thank you, Chair. Um, we're in the process of seconding an officer for six months to support our um, plan to transfer our vehicles, our, our smaller vehicle fleet, for want of a better term, over to EV. So that's an extra investment in climate change. We're also, obviously, this is a corporate commitment. So officers across the board are being used and their expertise and their time has been invested into this subject. Um, on top of that, obviously, we've got the money that's allocated through Better Lives for All to support feasibility studies around EV on our, um, sorry, around renewables on our 
sites. So, um, yes, there's a number of aspects that are already being invested over and above Adam's time. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you very much. So, um, does anybody else have any comments or questions on this? Because if not, we'll go to the vote. Is everybody happy with those two um, amendments to recommendation one and the rest of the recommendations as they stand? Thank you, Lee. That's unanimous for parts one and three of the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much. And so that brings us to the end of this morning's agenda. Thank not, you very much. Not quite, Lee. We've not got quite. one more recommendation related to Devon Home Choice. Oh, I'm sorry. OK. Um, hang on. Is that that's in the overview and scrutiny? It is. It's on this. It's on the screen as well. Now Thank leader. you. O and S fifty five twenty one. Uh, well, we're being recommended to continue to be a member of Devon Home Choice. I, I would hope that we're all absolutely in agreement with that. So let's. Shall we vote on that? That is unanimous. Thank you, leader. So, Mr. White. Gatekeeper, we are at the end of the agenda. <laughs> we are, we are now there. Thank you, Lida. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for attending this morning.